everyone. Welcome to I Went Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina, and make sure that you're following us, also sharing and liking today's podcast episode. Today is a very special podcast episode because I have an amazing event designer and business owner, entrepreneur who has worked with so many different people doing luxe events to even weddings, birthday parties, corporate events. She's done it all and has been in the business for 20 years. And she's also my first podcast guest. So I'm beyond excited to have her here. Her name is Kathy Tyrell from CBK Events. And I'm going to be interviewing her today to discuss really what is the start of, you know, the event design business, the ins and outs, and kind of how you start and where you get to being 20 years in the business. So, Kathy, welcome. Thank you for having me, Lucy. <laughs> It's such an honor. Oh, I'm excited Thank to you. have you here. Me too. Me too. Honestly, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of you. 20, <laughs> like, are you kidding me? You're amazing. Thank so, you. Kathy, tell us a little bit of, you know, your backstory. Who are you first? So, I was born and raised in Honduras. I moved to this country uh, in 1982. I was 16 years old. I came to Miami Beach High School, you know. <laughs> so, I, I grew up in Miami Beach. Um, I have three daughters. And I just have a passion for design. I just love, I knew I was that little girl pushing your furniture around <laughs> and asking my grandmother or my mother to change the sheets and the curtains because I thought it was time to give it a new look. Oh. So I think that I'm a designer, you know. At a heart from the exactly, very beginning. By nature, yes. That's amazing. Yes. So you own CBK Events. Yes. So what does CBK Events do? How long has it been in the business? Tell our viewers and listeners a little bit about that because I think it's amazing. I know your story, but we got to share it with them. <laughs> so I started 20 years ago, um, Celebration by Kathy Inc. And then we became CBK Events. Um, that's our DBA. It's shorter and people can remember. You see? So we do a special event production for high-end uh, weddings and special events. We also do a little bit of corporate uh, since 2020. That's just still been in the rocks, you know, but, you know, we're, you know, we're getting back to that business too. But my passion definitely is weddings. Yeah. And uh, we, we specialize in uh, draping and lighting the court. I know it's amazing. So speaking of that, tell us a little bit about did you start from the beginning when you started your business with, you know, draping and design and decor? No. So this is how it started. So uh, back in 2001, I was working for Health Watch in corporate America. I went to school for business administration. So I, that's what I was doing, administering business. Uh, and one day out of the blue, I just, I thought, I think I can do this for myself. It was a big company in 2001, but when I joined them, they were a lot smaller. So I helped them grow. And I thought to myself, well, maybe I want to work for myself. Maybe I want to try something on my own. And luckily I have a, I had a husband that was very supportive and he supported my idea of trying to do something on my own. So I quit my corporate job without having anything yet. So I started <laughs> looking, I looked at, um, subways, dollar stores, like different, this is, early 2000s, but I did not know exactly what I wanted to do at that time. I knew that I had the entrepreneur in me. My mother had a, my mother's an accountant and she had a uh, Kathy's flower shop in Miami Beach. Oh, so you already had some of the design background. And my, from and my, on. and my stepfather had a uh, printing business and I remember helping him pick colors and things. And my mother had Kathy's flower shop. So my mother, I think I got the design aspect from my mother you know I guess that was passed on to me because my mother's house always looked pretty we always had pretty curtains we always had a tablecloth in our table so anyway going back to um what started so I decided to leave and I started looking at different business and I found a small cafe it's called Cypress Cafe which is still in business it's right on a corporate um event center of Cypress Creek Road 
So I bought that uh, place from a Venezuelan guy who was really nice and kind. He was retiring. And it was inside uh, a corporate building. So University of Phoenix to the right, American Express, AT&T. So it was a great location. They were all in there. So it was a breakfast and lunch place. And they had a chef. They had a menu, everything ready. So I just took over. Well, the first day that I took over, the chef didn't show up because he had a bad cold. And I had to like put the gloves on and see it. There was another girl that she used to help me. But I mean, it was really, you know, a day to remember for me <laughs> because this is what I wanted to do with my life. I worked in corporate America. I had a desk. I had to, I had to just put gloves and go. And I couldn't distinguish the, the sour cream from the butter and the... Um, uh, cream cheese because they all look the same. <laughs> oh my oh my, god! It was really, but anyway, that worked out really well that day, and I realized, oh my god, owning your own business, it's totally no. different than what you really expected. So anyway, the chef came back the next day. He took over, and um, by the summer of two thousand and one. Was it 2001? 2001, I think it was, yeah. So by the summer two thousand and one, University of Phoenix asked me to do their graduation event and i'm like do the event what do you want me to do what you would need to provide food you know <laughs> You're like what do you I, want you exactly. want me to provide like a brunch like what know, give exactly me? <laughs> so anyway they tell well they said we want to have a lunch we're going to have a graduation at 10 a.m and then one thing later the other they order tablecloths and can you order tablecloths well I ordered tablecloths before for small functions in my house because I had done my sister's wedding at that time in yeah, my like backyard. Little, we, so exactly. Little start you know, with exactly. family. But then they said, well, we need a draping. We need, uh, you know, lighting. And I'm like, oh, my God. So my <laughs> ex-husband, my former husband, yeah. he was into, uh, he's an audio and video engineer. And he was into, he knew about draping and lighting because he worked audiovisual. He used to work for PSAV, who's now Anchor, the largest audiovisual company but, in the world. Yeah. They are. So anyway, he gave me advice. So we started, I put together the event and it was a success. And I fell in love with the decor because that's what I've always liked. Every time I bought a new house or I went to a small apartment, I just want my house to look pretty. I don't like, I like everything organized and in place. So I've had that. You know, very early on. Yes, I did. So anyway, I enjoyed that so much that I started thinking, this is maybe what I want to do eventually. So anyway, the summer passed. Then uh, Christmas came along of 2001. And AT&T, American Express, a dentist office, everybody in the building hired me to do the Christmas party. But they wanted it. They, they wanted to have it in the building because it was a nice corporate building, elegant building, glass, beautiful, still there. You can see it from 95. So anyway, they said, oh, we're going to have it uh, in our office. They have like a large space, like a large office. And everybody rented that, I guess. So they said, but we need you to help us. And I said, what do you need from me? Well, we need the food. We need this. So then the chef and I started talking. And, oh, by then it was a girl. So I let go of the other chef. The male, we were not just... See, not to I, that, yeah. because I want a presentation because I really um, upgraded the restaurant and I brought Starbucks coffee. I brought a lunch furniture. So I did you created all, a complete aesthetic and yeah, experience for completely different than what they had. Yeah. And the menu was only Italian. I changed. I did my own menu. So we did a little bit of Spanish, you know, we did a little bit of Americans, a little bit of everything. So everybody was fascinated with my, all of my changes. So everybody wanted to book me for their uh, event for Christmas and so I did like seven parties for Christmas and I my favorite oh my part God. my favorite part was to pick the linens the colors we did one within snow white like like a snow white theme because they wanted to do like a Winter they want to bring their kids exactly but they want to bring their kids oh, and okay. and the day after school so I did a wonderland you know like like a snow white theme with you know um kids little uh, stuff all over like it was so cute <laughs> you know we had snowmen and then we did the american express which was like a formal like with a big christmas tree. So they said well what about uh, doing the christmas tree in the lobby i'm like what yeah a 24 foot christmas tree i'm like i'm done for it <laughs> so anyway oh my god so you're like 24 feet no problem I, I know you know we had you know the the place had a lift but it was you know I realized at that moment that I really needed to put my business for sale 
because what I wanted to do is to have my own decor company. So at the same time that I was doing that, I built up a little small cafe inside Cypress Cafe. No, inside, not Cypress Cafe, but the building where the University of Phoenix was, which was still part of the complex. So the students at night will come in and they order my coffee, they order Jamaican parties. We had uh, empanadas, we had different things. So that was a success. So we did a second location in, uh, what was that? So, like you were being, so you were very successful in the cafe business. I was. Even though you felt at the time you were like, my heart's not in it completely because you love decor. That's a, from but corporate I, to that. That's But wow. you know, I still remember some of my customers' names. And, you know, I was there just uh, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then I went to pick up my daughters. My daughters were growing up at that time. They were like in middle school and elementary school. So I remember um, loving and then going home after. But I had, I, I had a different conversation with different clients every day, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon. And, you know, I learned to love that little place too. And it was my space because I created the aesthetics, the atmosphere that I wanted. I didn't want people to feel that they were coming, you know, into a typical restaurant. I wanted them to feel like more home feel. And we started doing like, you know, a lot of dishes from scratch, you know, had a, so I switched to a a Peruvian uh, chef. Oh my God, she made amazing ceviche and dishes and we incorporated some of her food into the cafe and it was a success, you know? So, and everybody was really, you know, eager to hire me for their Christmas party. So you were like managing, well, you're owning the cafe business and also on the side doing events? Doing, no. Yeah, except the events for the cafe and then doing the two little uh, satellite, you know, uh, little cafes that I had. Oh my so God. then you were by, a busy bee. By 2022, <laughs> no, by 2002, I made a decision to sell the cafe and um, gather my experience. And I narrowed down that I want to go into the core rental business. So I sold the cafe, the satellite location, the small little cafes, to a formal employee. He was managing one of the cafes, so he said, he I want to make Exactly. So anyway, I sold them to, the, then um, I put this, the business for sale, and, you know, a couple bought it, and um, they, um, they're still in business, actually. They still own it. I went by the other day and say hi. Oh, yeah, my God. They're getting ready to sell it now because they're going to retire. I think I'm the only, I think that place has had four owners. I'm the only owner that only was there for uh, less than two years. Everybody else has owned it for a long time because. It's a hot spot. It's a, it is, you know why? There's nothing around. You have to drive to power line to get decent food. So it's like in a weird spot where there's nothing around. So people from the corporation, they just try to come and get breakfast. And we, you know, we I remember we used to get fresh uh, from a, an Italian bakery, fresh muffins at uh, 7 a.m. when we got there. They were already So outside. it was like really good quality. Ex- it was good it quality, everyone. exactly. So anyway, so I moved on from that. So I um, saw the cafe finally in 2003 at the beginning, and I immediately found it Celebration by Kathy. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. You ready? And How'd you know about the name already, like Celebrations by Kathy? Because... Uh, one of the guys from American Express, it was one of the managers that like, he will hire me. They had, they started having like, uh, meetings every month with their staff. And I gave them the idea to make it more like relaxed, not so stiff. <laughs> you remember in those days that everybody had those small phones, the Blackberries. And I saw oh, everybody stressed. Days, yes. with the, you remember the Blackberry? That's the Blackberry. <laughs> so I saw everybody walking in and very stressed. And I'm like, why don't you try to be a little bit more, you know, like relax. So, and I said, we can put color into your office. Your office is so white, you know, we need a little yeah. bit of color. And then maybe you do a round table and you want to bring coffee, uh, donuts. We want to do something nice for your employees so they can feel motivated to attend the meetings. So he surely listened to me. And so anyway, one day he said to me, oh, he said, my wife is turning 50 and I want to throw her a party and I want to hire you. And I'm like, hire me. Yeah, I want to do the food, but I want to do the decor. He said, I notice how you are always into everything, even if it's just something small that you're You're always putting all the little details together. So anyway, and he 
when he introduced me to his wife, he said, oh, this is Kathy. This is Celebrations by Kathy. You're going to have... Also, he already gave me... He, uh, he introduced me to her. This is Kathy. Wait. This is Celebrations by Kathy. You're going to have her doing your celebration. So that stuck in my head. <laughs> so when it was time to pick my business, I'm like, mm, maybe Celebrations by Kathy because I'm going to be the one attending all of my clients. and You, you are know. the brand. Exactly. So yeah. anyway, that's how everything started. And um, I think February 7th, 2003, I filed for my DBA, for my S corporation and everything. And we got things going. I hired somebody to do my website. And, you know, I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it. Yeah, like, I was still it. like, you know, like I have a lot of advice to people. That's why I like to do coaching now because I wish somebody would have told me and nobody did, you know. But I figured that along the way. Yeah, you learn through the whole process yes. of practicing and being very hands-on. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So you're from corporate America to then, you know, being your own entrepreneur, owning a cafe shop, to then opening CBK. Yes. So with CBK, what has changed from when you first started to now? Oh my God. What are some of like the main points and changes that you could share that, you know, maybe someone that's starting new to the business or is experienced that they can reflect on because there, there's so many levels to a design business, but what has been some of the most major changes you've seen from like the Benjamin? internet? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the internet has changed the way with the business, you know, because, um, yeah, in 2003, internet, I love your response, <laughs> you know, 2003, we didn't have a high speed internet like we have now yeah. that everything is instantaneous, you know, we didn't Wasn't have it cell before phones. people had to fill out the forms. It was more paper trail. Oh my God. There was so much paper. There's so much ink <laughs> into those cartridges, you know? And then what we just discussing about perfect wedding guy, I mean, perfect wedding was with $750 a month to advertise in your little book. It was a budget so marketing has gotten easier for us now because mm -hmm. the internet has changed everything yeah but that was a big challenge to try to find your market to try to find okay who do i want to do business with who do i want to sell my services to i mean which way do i want to go do i want to do rentals like tables do i want to do flowers do i want to do this do i want to do that so because design is just you could go so many ways with it exactly and not everybody's a designer. People can do, you know, a rent, you know, they can run a rental company, but to they don't have necessarily the skills to design. I work, I have, I'm very lucky to work with amazing uh, planners that are designers also that I just, you know, and I just take my hat off because I'm like, wow, it's like, you can just only focus on design and have just this yes, which you take me to my next topic of yes. most people will say, I want to be a designer and planner, but with your 20 years in the business, isn't it very difficult and also in a way challenging the fact that, you know, designing and plan, like if you have to do a full service design from like draping down to dance floor wraps, down to ceiling design, and then to also plan because a planner is at the beck and call of the bride. Well. To be honest with you, and having I have like at least ten planners that I'm lucky to work with, and I can give everybody a different category because you got the planners. There's an amazing planner that she's an amazing designer that she does Indian weddings, and I have been lucky to work with her for many years and executed amazing events with her. Um, she's done celebrity events. And she started very later, but now she's super popular. I think she's the most popular uh, event planner and designer for weddings in uh, South Florida. And I can tell you that she's a designer by nature. She just knows what goes with what, and she's really quick. And, you know, she has to improvise because as a designer, you have to improvise. You know, because sometimes be things <laughs> don't, you know, sometimes things don't go as planned, you know, so you really have to like come up with something and she is amazing. So there's a few planners that are definitely designer and planner. But with the designer, Kathy, don't most designers also, let's say if they're designer and planner, they'll come to you and tell you what aesthetic they want and then you take it over and they focus on the planning process more or less? Well, um, there's two different kind of scenarios. There's the 
scenario where they come to me with a design. They said, well, this is our design. We just did an NFL player with an amazing company, actually. She's my friend, and she's a wonderful girl. She's out of Tampa, but she used to live here, and you know, all of her clientele is here, and we did this amazing event at PGA National a couple of weeks ago, and she presented me with this amazing plan. She already had an idea of what she wanted. I went along with it. I approved it immediately because she's... You saw that it was organized, put together, okay. and there was no missing Then there's gaps. the other scenario where people come to me and they're planners, but they don't have the logistics uh, insights and they don't know. So they come with these crazy ideas because they're pride or because, um, you know, she saw them on Pinterest. And I always tell people, listen, <laughs> Pinterest has ruined the world. I said, the I wo- agree. Pinterest has ruined original Everything. ideas. I Everything. feel like. Yeah. And given people a misconception of. Like something that's like crazy beyond like, because Pinterest makes it seem like something is just going to be like $8,000 when in reality, that's like a 30,000 installation. Exactly. <laughs> so Pinterest has ruined my world completely because people send me, <laughs> you know, people send me, you know, pictures. Oh, this is what I want. This is my budget. Or this is what my bright wants is my budget. So there is the planner that doesn't really, you know, like it's not really, um, uh, it's not really, uh, in touch with reality and I have to step in. Okay, we're not able to hang anything from this ceiling or we need permission or if we're at certain locations where you need uh, the hotel to hire the local, the in-house AV company so we can rig stuff, you know? So there's a lot of aspects and some of those planners don't have that logistics, logistics knowledge. knowledge. So it is my job to educate them and to bring them on board into um, the flame retardant, you know, uh, reality. Because a lot of people, believe it or not, want to hang, want to buy their own drape and do their own print and just hand it to me and hang it. I'm like, it's not like that. Yeah, which we actually had this conversation yesterday since yeah. on this podcast to keep it so real. So yesterday we were talking on the phone and you said that some people, you know, like you even see some people will purchase somewhere else because it's cheaper, but it's so important to purchase the right product that it has the FR seal. Yeah, exactly. Because what happened at the, the venue, they asked someone to take it down that they yes, didn't know better. Yes, because if you're not flame retardant, you know, uh, certificate, you know, the fire marshal can come in and remove every single drape, you know, so that is something really important that's that is why i know you guys because i know from the experts and for people that sell certified stuff you know yeah. like you know there's other people that buy stuff somewhere else i don't know if they're certified i just know my companies you know i check my you make sure know, to have like exactly. the right quality I have product to start, you know i have to comply that's a draping company I have to comply with the fire uh, fire marshal standards they are standards you know even especially because you work in very like high-end yeah, venues exactly. and they they request that of you yes which i'm sure you know yes yes they you go do. in yeah and then another thing when it comes to, like like you were saying, uh, working with planners. So vendor relationships are so important. And let me tell you, she is amazing at networking. If anything, if you could spill a little secret of how you do it, because amazing. But as you mentioned, you work with many different planners, designers. So you would say networking is a top notch, very important in this business. So for your listeners, for the people that are watching us, you know, want to share something. Um, networking. It's very important, very. You need to be out there. You need to, if you're not, if you're the owner and you don't want to do it, then you need to select someone to be the face of your company because um, when you meet another vendor face-to-face and when you start seeing the same people in different events monthly, even if you haven't worked with them, you can tell a lot by talking to someone about their ethics, their values, their morals, their practices, how do they run their business, you know? And obviously, as you start doing events with people, then I have my list. I have my black book, which <laughs> I love it. I have, I, have black few, book. I have a vendor black book <laughs> because, you know, certain companies in there, I will not do business Work, with yeah. unless I'm partnered with because somebody else hired me. But 
you know. But if you had to choose, those would not be the the vendors you work with specifically. There's not many, but it's a couple companies in there, you know. But uh, because I just rely on my ethics, you know, I want to be ethical, and I want the person who do business with me ethical a hundred percent. So to your listeners, yes, you need to network. You need to. Um, get to know who your uh, planners are, uh, who's the catering manager at this hotel. And you got to be proactive because let me tell you, in the hotel industry and venues, you know, like country clubs and places that they do uh, special event production, they change all the time. Like in Miami, I go into the Four Seasons way. You were at the time, Barry, well, now on the Four Seasons. So you need to do your homework and you need to be uh, active, you know, knowing who's who. Exactly. Yeah. When we send our mark, we have our, you know, we have a year Sophie, which is my social media marketing person. You know, like you know, we always work together. Okay, you need to if if a, if an email comes back, there's a reason. Maybe the carry manager from this hotel moved to another hotel, so we need to track her that to see where she's at and, and we need to find out who is. Yeah. So you need to do your homework, your marketing, your research. You need to do your clientele. You know, okay, which city do I live? You know, I have somebody that I'm coaching. Cause I'm also a business coach, and I was um, coaching her. Well, I did the interview to possibly coach her next year because I only do two coachings a year you take, you yeah, with two, my business yeah. coaching, and then two with, interior, with business owners, interior yeah. designer interior design jobs too yes also. because by the way she also now <laughs> does own an interior design business yes, which I we'll do. discuss more in a bit but yeah so she's an entrepreneur who doesn't only do event design you do interior design as well now she loves to have a full plate yes i do <laughs> i do it's funny you know somebody asked me that when are you gonna retire i'm like who retires why would i want to retire you know i love but that anyway though. you know so i do two interior design jobs and two business coach but i was talking to this lady who's interviewing me and we, I'm interviewing her to see if we're a good match for next year. And she said to me something very crucial that she said to me, she said, when I told her what I thought and how she will go about it, you know, as far as presenting, uh, being the face of her business, I'm totally shy. I'm very introverted. I don't think this is good for me. Then maybe you need to name somebody else. But, the, but I said, listen, to make it, you need to go out there and present yourself. People, you have to push connect yourself. Connect you. Connect. And, you know, when you talk to someone, I mean, I just, I remember I, I started bringing my business to Miami in 2016. And I remember I went there and I, I, I did not know one person. But I introduced myself. Hi, I'm Kathy. You, you had know, your I'm elevator right. pitch. I, you knew yes, what to say. Exactly. I so everyone, you need to work on your elevator pitch. Exactly. <laughs> you can't be shy. And you no, you can. You have to be. And look at people in the eyes. You know, always look eye at people. Contact, yes. Because you have to have eye contact. That shows me that they're confident. Yeah. And that you have makes to have you, your business card, yes. too. There's so many people that I ask for their business card. I'm like, are you kidding me? You are in a networking event and you didn't bring your business card. And you need to look presentable. Yes. You always, I always tell people, listen, you just need to look at your best because you never know who you're going to meet. One time, I can't, I'm not in liberty to say which wedding. Oh my but God. But it took place. You can't spill that. I know, I can. You said that. I wanted to tell you my most memorable. Yeah. Okay, we're going to that because I did a wedding. <laughs> in a very high-end place in Palm Beach where Elton John played. Oh, wow. So listen, Elton the planner can crazy. tell me that it was him playing. Yeah. Because we were bound to, we signed like 25 pages. Of, of NDAs and everything. I can Ridiculous. imagine. But anyway, I'm leaving. But I always like to be presentable, even if I'm setting up. Even you, if I'm in tennis you, shoes, bring I have my clothes. sparkle. Yeah. I have my sparkle shoes, my sparkle cap but i always look now sometimes i wear dresses sometimes i wear you and know. if not you'll change like after setting up you'll change something so, more presentable but listen to what happened so typically i go before the party starts so that day the planner said to me what are you doing i said i'm going to eat i'm starving oh okay you want to hang out a little bit longer i'm like oh hang out i don't want to hang out over here i really want to go oh okay just don't tell me that i didn't tell you so i'm walking out thank god that i was presentable and there's the limo. Elton John's limo pulls over and he gets out. <laughs> and it's like, and then there's a few people over there. And then the planet comes and said, Did I tell you to hang out? I'm like, Oh, I said, I didn't bring any change of clothes. No, you look great. Said, That's something that we can always come. You always look great. So I turn around and he was there for the ceremony, like to play the yeah. song for the ceremony. We had a, a white stage. They told me to wrap the stage and we did white draping. It was beautiful, but nobody told me that it was for Elton. I did see a huge piano. 
Yeah. But I did not realize that it was for him. So, I mean, out of all the pianists, like Elton John, like yeah. that what that I'm couple- not limited to say whose wedding was, but that happened in Palm Beach a few years ago. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I was no, going to say I, that couple had money. Elton John is the legend. <laughs> I know, they that. did. He, actually, my fact, the groom died. Oh my He's God. Dead. That's He's so dead. sad. He's dead. But recently. they had an amazing wedding. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They had an amazing wedding. But, you know, you always have to be presentable. You know, you always, that's what I always tell people when they start. Listen, I said, I don't care wh- who you're meeting, what you're doing. You'll be presentable. I said, you are just, just make sure that you walk with, you know, confidence. You know, you have to have confidence. If you were able to file this paperwork, you know, with the state of Florida, you're willing to do all this work, then you just, you know, just got to own it. You know, you just got to be yourself. Especially since, you know, you're out networking and also the fact that you're meeting with clients nonstop and clients, they'll meet with many, you know, companies, yes. but what they'll be attracted to is how you made them feel, how you also exuded confidence and were, you know, knew your stuff, which is also another thing that you're very knowledgeable about your industry. Well, you know, to your listeners, to those people that are starting to, you know, that, maybe have an idea, you know, they're just starting to maybe leaning towards, you know, owning their own business. I'm going to give you a piece of advice. You have to make a plan, make a plan, you know, uh, look for your resources, you know, around your community, uh, network, um, just make a plan, you know, logistics and planning everything in life has gotten me to where I am. I've always made a plan. I planned for my daughters to go to college because I bought them a prepaid college tuition. Yeah. And one of my daughters said to me one day, mommy, I don't think we ever thought that we had a chance not to go to college. Why? Because you I put it, I pl- so it's the same thing with your business. It's the same thing. You just have to like, you know, plant seeds, you know, and just be very confident, you know, don't doubt yourself because other, you know, if you doubt yourself, then you're leaving room for other people to doubt you, you know, and if you fail at something, I fell before I got up and I did it again. We have a saying in the event industry, you are, you are as good as your last event. So that's why I always want to give extra, you know, like I always want to do my best. I always try to do a little more than what they ask me. I always have a little extra drape in my truck, uh, extra light. You don't just because, take what's needed. It's no. so true. You have to be prepared. Because at you that have to point, plan A, B, C just in case. At that point, Lucy, when we're in an event, you collaborate. That's another advice that I have for people for upcoming uh, wedding designers. You got to collaborate. You know, you're not just your own. You want to collaborate with everybody because the success of an event is not just you. You need the photographer, the videographer, you need the floral company, you need the dance floor wrap, you need everybody around, you know, you need everybody in the same boat, you know, so you, at that point, you have to, you have to help each other. And some people go there with a selfish attitude. It's just me. I'm here for an hour to wrap this floor. And this is me. Well, I got news for you. I got to change the, I got to, I got to hang a chandelier. So you have to wait until I'm done. <laughs> yeah. If somebody didn't tell you, that's not my fault, you know. But then another advice that I have for your listeners is that um, you, this is very important. And I've learned this. This is one of my biggest lessons. You want to narrow down what you want to do. You want to be an expert, a master at what you do. Because in the event industry, especially if you want to do high-end wedding, they're very unforgiving. If you tell them, oh, I do dance floor wraps, I do draping, I do lighting, I do this, uh, people get a little bit, you know, you know, like hesitant, you know, and the planners, the those super high-end planners, they want to hire the best person that does uh, uh, wrap floors, the best person who does draping, the best person who does AV and audio and lighting production. So you have to be very careful because a lot of people are taking on a lot at the same time. And then, you know... You want to master a craft before you start adding so many things to the menu, which is such a true point because some businesses... What is that saying? Uh, Master of... I I forgot, but there's a saying that I remember my ex, my former husband used to tell me, you know, but, you know, you you have to be a master at something. It's not good. It's good to know a little bit about everything, but, you know, be a master at something, you know. Absolutely. That's great advice. Yes. Amazing. So to summarize, how can you say, if you were to say, give an advice to when you're first starting, what would be like 
the grand advice you would give yourself? When you're first starting into this business and you were like, I don't know if I want to do design, but I do want to do design. But how do I get started? Okay. Where are clients? That's easy. That's super easy. <laughs> you know, get an internship or a, a job with a, with a good uh, design company, whether they do, it depends on what you want to do, whether the floral, you know, draping, lighting, whatever. Just get, you know, like get yourself a, a, like a three week or three or two months or month job so you can see what really happens behind the scenes because just like I told you yesterday, when somebody asks me, oh, what do you do for a living? I do special event production. Oh, great. That's so much fun. I'm glad. You know, oh, my, I'm sure you have a lot of fun. I'm like, listen, I'm not invited to the wedding. I'm doing this wedding, you know? <laughs> You're but like, a lot listen, of people, I'm not sitting exactly, there enjoying it. I'm exactly, actually working it. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's a job. It's very stressful. It's a job. It's very stressful. And you depend on other people to do their job so you can do yours well. So what I want to say is that you want to give it a shot, you know, just... You know, contact a person, you know, like a company that has been established, you know, for a while and ask them if they will give you an internship or, you know, a job and you can collaborate. That way you know what well, you're, you're getting, getting into it into. because it is, you know, and then uh, narrow what you want to do. That's very important. Master what you want to do. Narrow what you want to do. Do your marketing research, you know, uh, real, you know, think about what areas are more important to you? Uh, do you want to focus on this? Do you want to focus on that? Because, you know, you can really get lost, you know, easily. Because owning a business, there's a lot of areas. Um, having the right uh, employees around you has made my life, you know, very easy, you know. But, have, you know, choosing the right person is really important. You know, when I started, I only had one manager and one assistant. And there was the three of us and two employees that they were part-time. And now we have 16 people. And, wow, yeah. you know, that has made a difference, obviously. So comparing it to the beginning, now I have more people to rely on. And I have to go to the strikes at night. But, yeah, make a plan. You know, be very thorough. Talk to people. Attend networking. Go to your community events. There's a lot of community events. I I always go and attend all of the, my community events, whether they're in Miami or they're in Palm Beach, because I always learn and I always uh, meet someone new. Yeah, absolutely. And the and the and the most important um, advice is like there's no there's no shortcut to success. You have to climb the ladder. You have to take your losses and just be kind. You know, like be kind to everybody around you. You know, it's just. Um, we do work in a very stressful industry. It's beautiful, but it's very stressful at the same time. So we need people to be kind and to be understanding, you know, and work together. If you're part of an event production, just be part of the team and help each other. Be nice. Yes. So, and I love that because a big thing is it's time to, instead of like envying or, you know, comparing, it's more like, there's room for everyone in this industry. Yes. And oh at the end of the God, day, you guys so all work business. together. Like you said, there's so much collaboration. And at the end of the day, it's like, it's, you're creating a beautiful masterpiece, but there's so many different pieces that are involved. So it's amazing. And okay. it's, it's a huge testimony uh, with Kathy, who I'm so excited that you came on today's Thank podcast you. Thank you episode. Thank you for having me. This was a blast. You gave so many golden nuggets. Let's yes. cheers to you being cheers. my first yes. podcast yes. guest. Yes. yes, cheers. Cool. So and thank you so much to all of you watching today's podcast episode. Make sure that you follow us, like, and share today's podcast episode. And again, a huge thank you to Kathy from CBK Events, who's an amazing designer in the industry for 20 years. We'll make sure to have all her handle down below so that way you can follow her business. And thank you so much to all of you for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for the next podcast episode. Bye.